This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Andreas Sada was left his position as team principal of McLaren, heading to Sauber as CEO. Big news, likely pulled by his four-year relationship with Sauber in their BMW era and his connections to the VW group whilst he was at Porsche. Audi are coming in to take over for 2026, remember? It's a big shock. I already thought Andreas was in it for the long term at McLaren, but that Audi potential clearly swayed him. So where does this leave the boys and girls in Woking? Step forward. Andrea Stella, not Andreas, Andrea. Promoted from McLaren Executive Director to Team Principal for 2023. But is he just a stopgap, a temporary holder of that position until McLaren find someone long-term? Let's talk about it. Now, when you look at Andrea Stella's entire Formula One career, it is primarily centered around one team, and that team is Ferrari. 51-year-old Andrea was born and raised in Italy, having graduated from university in Rome with a degree in aerospace engineering. He went on to spend 14 seasons at Maranello, from 2000 before he joined McLaren ahead of 2015. He was a performance engineer to Michael Schumacher in the glory days, specifically 2002 to 2006, and the same for Kimi Raikkonen when he took Ferrari's last driver's world championship title in 2007. Stella then moved internally to become race engineer for Fernando Alonso during Sebastian Vettel's domination years, plus one, 2010 to 2014. Alonso almost edged the title in 2010 and 12 couldn't quite make it happen. Stella was his race engineer for those years. His move to McLaren in 2015 was first as head of race operations, which then became performance director in 2018, then executive director in 2019, and then finally team principal ahead of 2023. Yes, he will be going into his ninth season at McLaren in 23. So you can't say he's not got a good sizable chunk of experience at the Woking based outfit. But also you cannot argue that his more successful years have certainly been as part of Ferrari. The question is, can his future years be as successful now with McLaren, with him in charge? Because he might have had senior positions before, but he's never been a team principal before. And actually talking of McLaren and Ferrari, when you compare their online websites, I've got to say there's not much split in them. I love the little animated sections on both sites actually as you scroll through. Functionality that today's video sponsor Squarespace can build into your very own website. You don't need to be a multi-million pound F1 team to have a beautiful online home anymore. Because with Squarespace's latest innovation, Fluid Engine, there's absolutely no limits on your flexibility. You can build exactly what you want, no coding knowledge needed. And best thing of all, it's free to try until you get to that time where you want to put your finished website live to the world. And when you're there, head to squarespace.com slash TomoF1 to get 10% off your first website or domain. Now, interestingly, according to Zach Brown, it was Andreas Seidel's plan as of earlier this year to always leave for Sauber when they became Audi, which is going to be in 2026. However, with Bonotto leaving Ferrari and Vasseur moving in, in to take his spot, it made sense that things were, you know, sped up and Seidel wanted to, to jump to Sauber quicker to establish himself way before 2026. Andreas informed me during the season that he was going to go elsewhere when his contract was up at the end of 2025. Question is, does this make the decision to appoint Stella somewhat of a reactive one, right? Promoting from within. Is Andrea the person that Zach envisaged leading that team long term? Because, you know, again, Sider's contract took him up to the end of 2025 and everything that Zach Brown has said regarding his relationship with Andrea Seidel has been quoted very, very healthy. Why would McLaren want anything other than Seidel to stay or at least get the most out of Andreas and keep him in that contract until the end of 2025? Because, you know, that's still three full seasons till we get to the end of 25. Well, Zach's quotes seem to suggest that once the Vasseur news dropped and it was clear Seidel would be looking for that exit door sooner than anticipated that Stella was the first port of call. The first person I was going to call to see if they would leave McLaren's F1 team is Andrea. Not at that point being sure whether that would be something he would consider. If Andrea would be happy to join his team principal, then I'd be very happy to make that change now, which I think puts everyone in their permanent homes for the foreseeable future. Of course, there was no guarantee Andrea was going to accept this role, this higher responsibility role at McLaren. But also, opportunities like this don't come along every day of the week, right? It's almost kind of like Mattia Bonotto. When he was at Ferrari in a senior technical role, he got the opportunity to take that jump up internally to team principal. He took it and Stella is very much doing the same. Senior internal role up 
to team principle rather than hiring from completely outside the organization. The more I read, the more I think about this, the more I feel that this wasn't a compromised decision from Zach Brown, not overly. Of course, I think the ideal for Zach would be to keep Andreas Sider on for the rest of his life, right? Because I think they're a great little partnership. But I think as soon as Zach knew that Andreas's heart lied elsewhere, he always wanted to go to Audi. He was always gonna leave McLaren at the end of his contract anyway. Yeah, sure, Zach could have kicked up a bit of a stink to try and get him to stay. Also, I think there's that human side. I don't think that would have been beneficial for anyone to kind of forcibly hold Seidel there. Zach said it himself, to, to put everyone in their permanent homes for the foreseeable future. It makes sense. Seidel was transparent to Brown that he wanted to depart the team eventually. Obviously, that's come along a lot quicker than expected because of Mattia Bonotto leaving Ferrari. Kind of like the dominoes that fell when Seb announced his retirement, from a driver point of view anyway. But if McLaren weren't satisfied with the option they had on the table, they for sure could have postponed. They could have, you know, sat on their hands and kept Seidel there for a bit longer. I'm sure they probably could have if they really wanted to. Have they decided not to stall? And when you look at Andrea Stella's CV, you've got to say that on paper, he does seem to tick pretty much all the boxes, apart from the lack of experience in that team principal role anywhere else. But the thing is, right, you don't train to be a team principal. Everyone who's done the team principal job has got to a position where they've got a lot of influence, they've got a lot of experience in Formula One. It could be from a technical point of view, it could be from a marketing point of view, it could be from an entrepreneurial point of view, like Toto Wolf, for example. And then they either give themselves or they're assigned the opportunity to be like, you know what? Let's go for it. It's always a risk, whoever they decide to promote to that job, because again, there's no one way of doing it. It's just how you as an individual decide to manage a team. And there's lots of different ways of doing that. And I'm sure culturally as well, depending on what team you are managing, there's not one size fits all. It's the ultimate delegating position. And with what, 22 years experience in Formula One across two of the most famous F1 teams of all time, experiencing the highest of highs in his early Ferrari years and the lowest of lows as well as abject mediocrity at McLaren, both of which I think are very valuable when it comes to creating a well-rounded individual as far as I'm concerned. He's worked with a ton of different team leaders from what Jean Todd, Stefano Domenicali, or more recently Eric Boulier, and of course Andreas Seidel. He's held a bunch of senior job titles as well, performance director, race director, head of race ops. The variety of knowledge that he's gained as part of these two massive F1 institutions surely stands him in good stead. He understands McLaren, and I think it is a shrewd appointment from Zach Brown. I don't think it's a name that would have potentially been snapped up from elsewhere, but I think promoting someone internally who's been at the team for nine years, executive director for three of those, I'm sure he's got ideas what it changed. I'm sure he's got ideas of what has stayed the same. And you've seen this team progress over Stella's time. You know, 2015, you got to say, like, wasn't in a great place all the way up until what, 2018 even, then the car wasn't particularly strong. But 19, 20, 21, 22 have been a significant jump up. Stella's gonna understand what has worked, what hasn't worked, and hopefully learn from those mistakes. But again, look, there's no guarantee of anything. Look at, I don't know, Paddy Lowe, for example, right? He was an absolute genius, years at McLaren, went to Mercedes and spearheaded from a technical point of view anyway, their domination, early domination of the hybrid era. Went to Williams, a chief technical officer, put him on gardening leave and everything. That's a, that's a mad, signing going to be so good and 2017 18 19 Williams were absolutely terrible I don't think anyone could have seen that coming and that's the thing right for McLaren going into 2023 I mean there's a lot of change anyway obviously with Oscar Piastri coming in you've got the new wind tunnel on the horizon now Stella taking charge it's going to be a big year for the papaya to keep up this momentum and see if they can actually break into this top three and challenge because does this lack of consistency in terms of both driver and team principal, does it help the team? I wouldn't say it helps the team for sure, definitely not. You know, I love Andrea Sado, I think it's fantastic. Though I think it hinders the team too much. I'm not seeing too much hindrance here as well, I'll be honest. It's not like someone external is coming in flipping tables and trying to exert some authority from outside. You know what I mean? Like he's a McLaren guy now as much as he was a Ferrari guy. And I wish him well. I hope he can carry the positive momentum going forward. And maybe because he isn't a big name and because there isn't that same pressure around McLaren like there will be under, I don't know, Vasseur at Ferrari. There's going to be a lot of viables on Vasseur. There's going to be a lot of viables on Seidel going to Sauber. If anything, I feel like, yeah, Stella's kind of going to go under the radar out of the three in terms of most scrutiny because he's the most unknown, I suppose. So what do you think? Do you think Andrea Stella is there for the long term or do you think Zach Brown is going to be looking elsewhere? I hope he can take this opportunity and become an established team principal. 
why not? Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring what I do. My name's Tomo. Thanks again. Have a good one. Ta-da.